Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Call from the Grave, Sleep Demons, and the Therminator Arfsonist. <laughs> Welcome to the Sigma Tiger News Channel with the big Sig Tig here with you. Let's check it out. Let's dive right in. What's happening? Husband who buried wife alive after she made terrifying 911 call from Apple Watch sentenced for horrific crime. There's the mugshot of the individual. Quite jolly looking. Uh, after being kidnapped, stabbed, buried, and left for dead for 12 hours, the victim made a harrowing escape and spoke out against her husband in court, declaring, Nobody can take away my life. Awesome. Good for you. Uh, che Ann, the Lacey, Washington man, who pled guilty to second-degree attempted murder of his strange wife, has been sentenced for his horrific crime. On Monday, Ann was given more than 13 years in prison as he was sentenced to 165 months behind bars, following, followed by three years probation. Per... King 5, he was also slapped with a lifetime no-contact order with the victim. The victim spoke during the sentencing hearing, retelling her harrowing story of survival after the attempted murder in October 2022. According to her initial account, the two argued over their divorce and money. And after she asked him to leave, he attacked her, punching her in the head before throwing her to the ground. He then allegedly duct-taped her hands behind her back, as well as taped her eyes, thighs, and ankles. When he left the room briefly, she made the 911 call with her Apple Watch, but when he later realized she had it on, he allegedly destroyed it with a hammer. Listen to the 911 call below. No thanks. Uh, she said he then took her by van to the woods, where he stabbed her breasts with a sharp object, and could be heard digging before he put her in the ground and placed a heavy tree on top of her. Dirt was then placed on top of her as well with uh, Young saying she believed she was in the ground for a few hours as he told her she was going to die. I told him to think about our children. I don't need anything. Today I'm going to kill you, she recalled in court according to Como News. He dug the ground and he threw me in the hole. He stabbed me several times with his knife on my chest and then he buried me alive. She eventually wriggled free of the tape on her arms, legs, and eyes, however, and moved the tree off her to get out of the hole. Her husband's van was still nearby, and she observed its lights were on and the windows were steaming. She, however, made a run for it, spotted a nearby house, and asked them to call police. Authorities later found the location the young described, saying they discovered a hole consistent with a grave-type design, in which they found duct tape and hair consistent with the victims. Totally busted. Nobody can take away my life, my precious life. I came out alive, she said before adding, After that day, I and my children's life was crushed. I have to live my life with emotional trauma and health issues for the rest of my life. Yeah, absolutely. Very unfortunate. But thank the Lord you made it out and had the fortitude to fight for your life. An's defense attorney argued he was over-medicated and under-treated for PTSD at the time of the crime, saying that caused a break in him at his lowest point, at his point where he's essentially homeless, hasn't slept, isolated from friends and from family. He also addressed the court, saying, I wish that I could go back and never enter that house that day and walk away. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, everyone, and for causing terrible pain because of my foolish act. I mean, sorry I went in the house? I mean, like, do, why don't you directly... Uh, mention your wife and say I'm sorry I did that to you specifically like not that I couldn't handle my temper to his children he added I love you guys with all my heart you mean everything to me you two are my most precious gift from the heavens well you won't be going there sir unless you repent for your sin but you will still be judged to the victim the judge added I'm sure there's no words that describe the physical suffering and the fear and anguish over 12 hours of thinking you might lose your life <clears throat> and you might never see your children again you are strong and you are brave I'm hopeful that today's hearing will be the close of this chapter and will make it possible to focus on your emotional and mental healing for yourself and your children. Yeah, we'll pray for you. A long, hot U.S. summer is looming, forecasters say, and you know what that means. It's an election year and it's going to be hot and there's going to be tons of crime. The hotter it gets, you know, it's correlated with crime. Is it causal? We don't know, but it's 100% correlated. And look at this seasonal temperature map. 
looking like the uh, Midwest is going to get real steamy. Even the Northeast, interesting. Okay, well, let's have a look. A hotter than usual summer is likely to occur in the U.S. and many other parts of the globe, according to new forecasts and scientific research. Why it matters. Extreme heat is a major public health threat and plays a role in droughts and wildfires. Hot weather, particularly when it comes during prolonged heat waves, also threatens the reliability of the nation's increasingly strained electric grid. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, air conditioning is just sucking it dry, uh, charging up your electric vehicles now. Oh, but don't worry, we don't have the infrastructure for it, and we won't have it, but buy your electric vehicle. An ongoing El Nino event in the tropical Pacific Ocean is quickly fading, with cooling ocean temperatures at the beneath of the surface. A La Nina climate cycle is expected to take shape, which features cooler than average tropical Pacific Ocean temperatures later this summer. Some studies show that these transitions are associated with hotter than average summertime conditions across large parts of the U.S. centered across the Midwest. The transition will also influence conditions around the globe as the planet nears its 11th straight month with record warm temperatures. Ooh, look out. It's going to be a hot one, people. Australia uh, totally... Uh, Losing their plot on this one, uh, apparently there was a, a Catholic priest or a Christian uh, minister who was attacked. Uh, it's considered an act of terrorism because uh, it was religious-based. It was a Muslim who went up and stabbed him. I believe he could be dead or he's in the hospital in critical condition. And uh, the Aussies were like, Oi, you must take that down, Elon Musk. And Elon's like, free speech. No. And they're like, yes. So I think he might have complied and took it off of the Australian IP address's access. But they were like, no, mate, we want you to take it off the entire internet. So anyway, they went ahead and uh, Elon told them to get, get bent. Australia's online safety watchdog said the social media platform should shield the graphic video from all users, not just Australians, saying it would cause irreparable harm if continued to circulate, leading to a court to order a far wider block. Well, how could you block something globally when you are just a small nation, uh, large island, small nation? All right, Australian court has ordered billionaire Elon Musk's social media platform to block every user from seeing violent footage related to the Sydney church stabbing, not just block it for Australian audiences. Audiences Amid political unity against x Corps' defiant stance to keep potentially harmful content online, the nation's internet cop launched the matter in federal court on Monday evening. During a hastily arranged hearing, a barrister for the e-safety commissioner said the graphic and violent video remained online on X, formerly known as Twitter. A 16-year-old boy has since been charged with terrorism offense over the stabbings of Assyrian Bishop Mar Mar Emanuel and Father Isaac Royal during a live stream service last Monday night. The stabbing attack led to a riot outside the Christ the Good Shepherd Church in Wakeley. In the video that has been circling, the alleged attacker referred to insults against my prophet before the stabbing, which would be Muhammad. The false prophet, because Islam is totally taken from the Bible. You don't believe me? It's a fact. Look it up. And they argue all kinds of stuff. Okay? Whatever. It's just my personal opinion. The Quran is a corrupted version of the Bible, and they've twisted it around and said, the Bible is not the final word of God. It came to Muhammad, and now Muhammad has the final word of God. And then they go ahead and say that Jesus uh, was a prophet. He wasn't the son of God. But the actual Bible, the Holy Bible, is the word of God. And the word of God is infallible. So it's a complete contradiction of itself. And what they teach the in Islam to the Muslims is that uh, all these things are true. But in fact, they're contradictory and they're false. Um, a whole bunch of crazy stuff about Muhammad and his behavior. Things that he did. Uh, and what's the deal with Islam? Well, there's two sets. There's uh, the Shiite and the Sunni, and it's basically all about uh, how the religion is meant to be led. One group believes that it should be hereditary, or uh, basically based off of Muhammad, and the other group says uh, they should be chosen, and they don't get along, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, a terrorist attack on a Christian and they're like, all right, shut it down. We don't want to have that. It could be irreparable harm. But uh, you know what I mean? Like literally you turn on any TV program and you're going to see all this kind of stuff normally. Go to Law & Order. Type it in. CSI. Anyway, the left, that left it accessible to international users in Australia using an overseas-based virtual private network, a VPN. Yeah. 
So be VPN kind of like routes your internet protocol address around so uh, they can't tell where it's coming from. That was a choice. They could have done more, Christopher Tran said. He submitted that X should shield footage from all users, not just Australians. X pushes free speech argument. Absolutely. Anticipating an argument about the United States' right to free speech, Tran said it appeared that right did not extend to depictions of violence. Well, it's like, put a disclaimer. Just like always, you know. Hey, this footage may be damaging. Maybe, you know what I mean? Uh, looked upon as something negative. So avert your eyes. Don't watch it. X also branded the Internet's cop move an unlawful and dangerous approach. Marcus Hoyne, appearing for X Court, urged the court to postpone the matter until he could seek sensible and proper instruction from a San Francisco based client. The e safety commissioner's court application was served at the last possible moment, Hoyne said. He further argued that granting the order would affect international users in circumstances where it has no impact on Australia. His appeal failed. Justice Jeffrey Kennett granted the interim order sought suppressing the footage to all users on X until at least Wednesday afternoon. The case will return to court on Wednesday for an argument about a permanent suppression. PM labels challenge extraordinary. Prime Minister Anthony Albanese described X's decision to challenge the Safety Commissioner's Court as extraordinary. How could he possibly uh, challenge our uh, censors? You know, like, what what is he thinking? Like, free speech has consequences. No. Free speech has a cost, okay? And a cost that not a lot of people are willing to pay. Like, if you go out and call someone a name or get angry with someone and express your feelings and someone might not like it and they might attack you, okay? That is the cost of free speech. I can't go and say whatever I want and expect nothing to happen, okay? I should be able to say what I want and hopefully nothing will happen, but I can't expect people to hold their emotions in. Albanese criticized the broadcast of violent images and said some social media content exacerbated the pain of many people. I find it extraordinary that X chose not to comply and try to argue their case. Albanese told a free, sorry, told a press conference adding that X's response to the order by a government panel contrasted with that of other social media providers. Oh, well, he's not playing ball like the other ones. This isn't about freedom of expression. This is about the dangerous implications that can occur when things that are simply not true are replicated and weaponized in order to cause division. Well, it's true that a Muslim stabbed a Christian because he's a terrorist. I don't see anything untrue about that. Tanya Plibersick called him an egotistical billionaire. Sarah Hansen Young dubbed him a narcissistic cowboy, while Simon Birmingham attacked X's ridiculous and preposterous argument that removing imagery of a terrorist attack should be left online. So they called him an egotistical billionaire and a narcissistic cowboy. And, and they attack him. So what's the deal? They want their free speech, but you're not allowed yours? Come on, people. And Albanese actually had a press conference today where he was talking about memes. And he was talking about how like they had to remove memes of him where his face was superimposed on other figures. And uh, he's totally against memes. So this guy is a mega loser. That's all there is to it. If you don't have a sense of humor, if you don't have the ability to discern what is appropriate, then you are a loser and your parents were losers too and they did a terrible job raising you. You should have the ability to say, okay, this may be uh, inappropriate. I'm not going to watch it. If I do watch it, I understand that I could uh, have a feeling, okay? Emotions are real, people. Like, they happen. If you try to eliminate all emotions, you know what we're going to have? Nothing but robots around. Elon's working on that. We'll cover it shortly. Sleep paralysis demons and why they're different to nightmares. If you've never had sleep paralysis, it's basically like you're asleep and you're, like you're rolling around, but you feel totally awake. It's almost like an out-of-body experience. In many cultures, they have things uh, that they describe as demons that will sit on your chest and that can be visible. I've heard of the old hag before. These spooky scenarios have been documented throughout history, but experts insist they are simply sleep paralysis demons. It sounds like the start of a horror film, a shadowy figure at the end of your bed, a faceless presence sitting on your chest. It doesn't matter which of these terrifying scenarios plays out. When you wake up from a deep sleep, they all have one thing in common. You can't move, run away, or cry out for help. You're fully conscious, yet you're frozen to the spot and unable to escape your sleep paralysis demon. So what's going on? Sleep paralysis demons are nightmarish hallucinations that often accompany episodes of sleep paralysis. This occurs when the temporary paralysis, which is a normal feature of REM, rapid eye movement, the stage of sleep called rapid eye movement, where dreaming takes place, continues for a second or minutes after waking, 
As the line between sleep and wakefulness is blurred, sufferers see, hear, or feel things that are not really there. One study reported that out of 185 patients diagnosed with sleep paralysis, more than half, 58%, sensed a presence in the room, usually something non-human, and 22% actually saw a person in the room, usually a stranger. Ooh. Professor Chris French, head of the Anomalistic Psychological Research Unit at Goldsmiths University of London says the content of the hallucinations experienced during an episode of sleep paralysis can vary enormously, but certain themes tend to occur more often than others. One of these is that of demons, as beautifully illustrated in a famous painting, The Nightmare, by Henry Fusilli, dating back to 1781. In Europe in the Middle Ages, sleep paralysis episodes were commonly interpreted as attacks by sex-crazed demons who would have their wicked way with their paralyzed paralyzed, sorry, <laughs> helpless victims, the male demons referred to as incubi, and the females were known as succubi. If you ever heard of succubus, right? A demon that's going to come in and attempt to uh, have intercourse with you in your dreams, and uh, absolutely terrifying. The uh, hypogonic and hypnopomic hallucinations. There are two main types of hallucinations associated with sleep paralysis, both of which can seem very real and incredibly frightening. Hypnagogic hallucinations occur when falling asleep, and hypnopompic hallucinations occur when waking up. Both tend to happen when you're partially conscious during REM sleep. So uh, how do paralysis demons feel to someone who's experiencing them? Hallucinations can be classified in three main categories. Intruder, incubus, or vestibular motor, VM hallucinations. Uh, yeah, so inter intruder hallucinations include sensing or, or seeing something threatening in the room. Incubus hallucinations, which often tend to co-occur with intruder hallucinations are marked by sensations of pressure on the chest along with feelings of suffocation or choking unlike intruder and incubus hallucinations vm hallucinations are sometimes associated with feelings of bliss these hallucinations involve illusionary movement experiences such as sensation of floating spinning or flying as well as perceptions of changes in the body position or side that's something i experienced i didn't have the old hag basically was in my bed had an exam the next day could have been stress related uh, but I was consciously awake in my bed and like I couldn't move and I realized I was like I can't move It's happening to me These hallucinations are very different from nightmares as Roth explains sleep paralysis demons manifest when the body is temporarily mobilized While the mind is awake whereas nightmares unfold within a dream narrative and lack the physical sensation of paralysis There you have it. So are demons real? Are evil spirits real? The tiger says yes 100% all of those feelings of guilt and doubt, that little whisper in your ear that's not you and it's making you feel down and bring you down, that's a demon's voice. It's a fact. Okay? Believe it. Look at the Bible. Jesus was expelling demons and evil spirits from people all day long, every day. That was like his thing. It's never talked about, but that was his thing. Expelling evil spirits. So, if you ever feel like uh, something comes upon you and you react a certain way and you're almost like a, a voyeur, then yeah, you're a demonized. And many people today are completely 100% demonized. They have no idea. Watch fire-breathing robot dog that can torch anything in its path. The Terminator quadruped machine that shoots 30-foot jets of fire could be yours for 7,600 pounds. A flamethrowing robotic dog has been invented by a company in the United States that is capable of delivering on-demand fire from anywhere. Uh, called the Thermineer, the remote control device is on sale at a price of $9,420 American. There you have it. So this dog is called Spots from Boston Dynamics. Uh, the flamethrower is called Throw Flame. The robot is not advertised as a weapon with the manufacturer suggesting possible uses including wildlife control, snow and ice removal, general entertainment. There you have it. It has the power to shoot 30-foot jets of fire and also uses its laser sight, flashlight, and light-sensitive mapping capabilities to operate at night. Boom. Look out. This thing is happening. So check out uh, Under Your Tree this year for Christmas. You might be lucky and have the Terminator. Tesla may start selling its Optimus humanoid robot next year, says Elon Musk. And there you have it. Elon Musk announced that Tesla may start selling its Optimus humanoid robot next year. The automaker plans to use the robot in its own factory by the end of the year. A few months ago, Tesla unveiled Optimus Gen 2. We covered that. A new generation of its humanoid robot that should be able to take over repetitive tasks from humans. The new prototype showed a lot of improvements compared to previously underwhelming versions of the robot. And it gave some credibility to the project, which was laughed off by many when first announced, with a dancer disguised as a robot for visual aid a few years ago. There you go. That's what it was before, and this is what it is now. Touching an egg, I seen it fold and close, whatever. Uh, Boston Dynamics has one as well. It looks a little bit better than that, to be honest. It doesn't look 
like a human, but just operationally, and it's electric. And uh, it's hard to say what exactly is going to happen with this because Tesla's shares are bombing. They're down 46% this year. Covered that on my other channel, Sigma Tiger Trade. If you're interested in financials, check out at Sigma Tiger Trade. Yeah, so what the heck? Furthermore, Musk said that he believes Tesla could start selling the Optimus humanoid robot to customers outside of the company by the end of 2025. He really he expects Optimus to represent most of Tesla's revenue and overall value eventually. And he said they expect it to be less than half a car, so closer to $25,000. It's a little bit more expensive than your Terminator flamethrowing dog, but this thing probably bake you eggs and uh, teach your kids their homework. Sigma Tiger, all up in your grill. Like and subscribe. 10,000 likes or subs, the mask comes off. Sigma Tiger, signing out.